So our next story, what we're going to talk about is... I recently did the episode about what's the scariest movie of all time where I was postulating, like, is there a movie out there that's so terrifying that's never been released? And what I what I thought would be, like, qualif- not necessarily qualifiers, but way to identify the movie. And on YouTube, I got a lot of response on that video where people were talking about movies they particularly found scary, either as a kid or as an adult, or movies they found disturbing. It was really good. And, it was a really cool conversation with you guys. One of the movies, though, this was told. This was mentioned by Joe on YouTube. Joe said, "There's a movie out there called Return to Babylon." It instantly intrigued me, and it was supposedly a haunted film. And so I started looking into the mythology of this very recent movie, very recent movie. Started looking into this mythology of this movie, and this story's weird. So, let's start from the beginning. So the director of Return to Babylon was Alex Monty Kanawati. He says the people in the film industry know him as Monty, so we'll call him Monty. Monty was driving down the road, and he saw in Hollywood... So he saw on the side of the street a factory-sealed box, or bag, whatever, a factory-sealed package of black-and-white film reels. And he's like, oh my god, this is amazing. Like, look at all this brand-new black-and-white film reels. I've always wanted to shoot a black-and-white movie. And so he originally shot a short film called Rise of Babylon. And it is a story, it's a silent film about the golden age of cinema. So in the silent film era. And it was moderately successful for being a short film. And this was before The Artist. This was before, you know, the big budget silent film, which looks stupid. Uh, Let me say this too. That era of time is like my least, I think all that, the music that came out of the like 1920s, 1910, I think all the music super irritating. I don't like the movies. I don't like the culture. I just, that entire... That entire part of American culture, I was not a fan of. Not a fan of the flappers. I did really enjoy The Great Gatsby. I thought that was a good book. But, I mean, like, overall, like, when I was watching trailers for this movie, it's all... I'm like, oh my god, volume down. This is driving me nuts. I don't like jazz to begin with. I don't like brass instruments. And so you basically had an era where everything was, like, super loud, super brassy. The chicks were hot. Did enjoy that. And the mobsters. But the mobsters came a little bit later, I think. After the Depression. So, like, pre-Depression stuff. Ugh, so annoying. If I had to live through that, I'd be like, sign me up for World War I, please. One ticket. I will be a doughboy if I have to listen to... Oh, my God. Annoying. That's what caused the Great Depression. They were all depressed because they had no good music. So, anyways... He shot Rise of Babylon, and it got moderately successful. And this was, like I said before, The Artist, which was the big budget silent film. He went to then shoot Return to Babylon. And for that, I don't know if for Rise of Babylon he did this, but definitely for Return to Babylon. He got a hand-cranked camera. So it was like the you had to turn it to, to use it. Da, 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 da. And he shot Return to Babylon, and that was a bigger budget, and it had a bunch of stars in it. Jennifer Tilly was the only one I remember off the top of my head. I think, like, Maria Conchita Alonzo was in it, but I don't know. I could be wrong on that. But anyways, Jennifer Tilly was in it. She was in all the Curse of Chucky movies. She was the bride of Chucky and the mother of the seed of Chucky. But anyway, and she's done some actually other much better movies than that, but that's what I know her from. So, he got this cast and they shot this movie. And when they started, this was in 2013, it was when Return of Babylon was finished. And that movie was about the fall of Hollywood. So, you're looking at all of these scandals that brought down Hollywood. Fatty Arbuckle being one of the big ones over there. Fatty Arbuckle was this dude, like this, basically he was the, who's the fat guy from Saturday Night Live? Chris Farley. If you took, basically, the comedy of Chris Farley and the star power of Brad Pitt, that was Fatty Arbuckle. He was a super famous actor, and he was this big fat comedian, and he raped a girl, and the rumor was was that he crushed her to death while he was raping her, and she died. And he was on trial for murder. And he didn't get found guilty, but it completely ruined his career. It was just like this huge scandal. So, 
that kind of plays into it, just like the fall of the. It's the, the it, movie takes place when silent when talkies were appearing and the silent film era was disappearing and all that stuff. When he was editing the movie, he started noticing. So this is the story. This is the story that I saw on all the websites. So you kind of know where this is going. This is a story as I was researching it. And again, thanks, Joe, for bringing this movie to my attention. It was a wonderful journey researching all this. So I'm looking at all these websites, and they're saying that as Monty began editing the film, he started noticing there was distortions in the picture. Sometimes the faces would appear like tortured, like someone would turn their face and you would see like this tortured, like ghoulish look on their face. Sometimes their hands would grow really big. Like, they'd be pointing at something, but their fingers would be, like, four feet long. Sometimes you'd see ghostly images move in the background. I'm like, holy, this is terrifying. And the movie, and I was like, maybe this does kind of fit in what I was thinking, like a scary movie oh, slash a cursed film. And they show all these stills, and you just see kind of these haunting images of people being like, Ugh, and people with their long fingers, and there's this creepy guy with no shirt on with his really long nose, and he just looks like a, a beast walking by. So I keep looking at these articles and they're like, they brought out these film experts, the photography experts to look at the film. And they're like, the, the, that shouldn't happen. Even if you use a hand cranked camera with black and white film, you shouldn't be getting these distortions. It, it, someone might have done something in post, but it doesn't appear that it's been altered. And he was like, you know, no, I didn't do add any special effects to this. The budget was really low. They didn't have money to do special effects. Some people thought it was because you took 16 millimeter black and white film and then you bumped it up frames per second so it you know can might distort the the read speed of the film and all this stuff and the film was never released and i'm like well that is kind of creepy and you're looking at all these images and they keep having this like on these articles that have little like a youtube video of the director and i was like oh, i'll watch that later i'll watch that later let me keep reading these articles because i'm on like i'm I, i'm you know i'm on the story i'm a bloodhound so i'm reading this i wish i'd watched that video earlier obviously but so he's like, the articles are saying, like, this film is cursed, possibly cursed. It could be a hoax, but it looks like it's cursed. And I read article after article that kind of towed that line. And then I, I was like, oh, man, that's super creepy. So then I looked it up. The movie is actually having a showing for the first time this year, a public showing in 2018, according to the website returntobabylon.com. So it's still an active project. It's not like it's a dead film and it's disappeared. They're planning this year to do a showing in Hollywood. And I'm like, okay, that's creepy. And then I started thinking like, dude, what if they showed that movie in like a theater and everyone's like, Bruh! everyone gets possessed or something like that. Like, what if it's finally been released? So anyways, after that daydream and all of the research I did, I finally decided to watch the, you, the little director commentary thing where he's talking about the movie. Now, I'm going to play it for you. But I want you, okay, so the story I just told you, the director Monty was interviewed several times, or sourced, I should say, several times for the articles that I just read. I'm going to play the little clip for you, and I want to see if you pick up a few of the same things I did. Hi, I'm Alex Kanawati, and uh, I go by Alex Monty Kanawati. Most people call me Monty in the film industry. And I'm directing a movie called Return to Babylon. It stars Maria Conchita Alonso, Tippi Hedren, who's infamous for her film The Birds, and Miss Jennifer Tilly. And what's interesting and fascinating about this movie is that upon making the film, making a film is a very intense journey for a filmmaker, I'd like to invite you to see some of the footage here. It seems like I've captured Christ-like images on this film, not to mention a lot of unnerving characters. I suffered... Uh, persecution from uh, family and friends. Uh, I was stripped of my identity, finances. I found myself oftentimes not knowing where I was going to get my next meal and um, it, uh, it really took its toll on me and I kept insisting that what I had seen in the footage which I'm about to share to you, I can show you something right here. Okay, for example here. We have a scene run here and we see that image there. Women subsequently grow beards. This is an actress named Devora. Here she, right there, turns. Right here. Very Christ-like. We can see here, this is Maria Conchita Alonso. And in frame by frame by frame by frame by frame, 
examination, we can see that at that point there, she looks to be very biblical. Very Old Testament, New Testament, between that shot and that shot. And when we see she continues into her own ranting and rage, she becomes Maria Conchita Alonso. But in further examination, once again, we go backwards and we see, here we go, right there. Okay, so none of what he said was reported in any of the articles, and none of what the article said was anywhere in that video. I don't know, at this point, I don't really know how much of that video I played, probably just a couple of minutes. Even if I cut it off halfway through the links in my my show notes, there's a couple of things going on. He talks constantly about, look at, you can see the Christ imagery. You see how it's making Christ imagery? Let me tell you what he's talking about. It's a woman with long hair turning quickly, so her hair looks like a beard. What? That happens in, in every, that happens in everyday life. When I was watching that video, I'm kind of, I put it in and I'm, I was probably doing something else, I think. And I was kind of barely paying attention. But then he goes, I lost my family and I lost someone, they stole my identity. And I remember kind of refocusing back on the video and thinking, this guy is nuts. Like this has nothing to do with ghosts or haunt, a haunted video or cursed film reels which is what other like who left these black and white film canisters on the side of the road was it to get rid of this cursed video this guy obviously has some issues and he's like i lost my family over this and now i'm i don't know if he was running around his family being like look look here's christ imagery and it's just a picture of a girl with long hair turning slightly to the left and making it look like she has a beard i will say this though he sniffs a lot i'm not implying anything I'm not alleging anything, but he sniffs a lot in the course of that, what was it, three, four minute video? A lot. So, hopes dashed. Here I thought I had a real example, and it's not Joe's fault. Joe, again, thanks for sending me the clip. I mean, thanks for putting me on the story. I was totally into it. I was like, oh, and people on the set of the movie were like, oh, ghosts are pushing us, ghosts are pushing us. At this point, I don't believe any of it. I think what happened was Monty saw all this, he was sniffing a lot, and he ended up seeing all this Christ imagery. Let's put this stuff together. This is what I think happened. I think Monty, and what's weird, none of the articles call him Monty, even though he calls himself Monty. Again, it's kind of weird. I think it's a publicity scam. I think he really did see a bunch of Christ imagery in his movie. But I think after that, and which isn't there, obviously, it's just a glitch. But then after that, it became demonic, spooky happenings on the set and everything's like that. Because most people who are showing the clip, the pictures I was seeing before was of like a ghost man walking through the woods or like these demonic figures. If the photo and that made me interested on keep clicking on it and doing more and looking into the story and seeing if I could get a copy of the movie and all this stuff. If all the websites were, watch this woman turn into a man as she turns slightly to the left, then I wouldn't have clicked on it. The website wouldn't have run the article. Nothing. He probably does believe there's some sort of mystical importance to this movie. There isn't. And the story's just been overblown. So it's been busted. That really sucked. I was really looking for, I was like, dude, if this movie actually exists and it actually has these creepy images in it, I will buy a copy of it. And just to check it out. So you almost had me fooled. If the movie had already come out, you probably would have had me fooled. I probably would have paid money to get a copy of it or rent it or however I could have gotten access to it legally. But yeah, Return to Babylon. <laughs> That's me giving it a big raspberry. I'm sure the movie may be well made and I hope everyone who made it has fun. And I hope this guy, you know, finds the help that he needs, obviously. But busted myth. I, we're still on the lookout for a creepy, cursed movie. It'll pop up someday. I believe that it exists out there, but we'll just have to keep looking. But again, I, I thanks for the suggestion, Joe. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys.